Hello and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Uh, on this video, uh, we're going to take another look at another uh, part of the new revelation. This is going to be part seven, and we're going to take a look at it in the book of Jeremiah. And just to recap and recall um, what the mirror revelation is in reference to, it is defined as whenever the Heavenly Father was speaking to an Old Testament prophet, and he often was um, giving them, telling them, giving them something to do, telling them something to do that was an example of the way he saw the house of Israel, or he was either showing them something that was an example of how he saw the house of Israel and their rebellion, of course, at all times. Because he always made reference to us in good times, uh, whenever one is not walking in rebellion, rebellion, he referred to us as the his vineyard uh, with ripe grapes, good grapes. Um, I think I'm trying to think of another time he actually made a reference in the Old Testament to the children of Israel. And he gave an example of them, of course, walking in his will. Because a lot of the times we saw he gave examples of them, uh, comparisons, parables, like Jesus Christ did when he gave parables in reference to the kingdom and he gave comparisons. That's sort of like what this is, okay? But in reference to these revelations, they are, as it, as it pertains to the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and their behavior. And then giving them, giving each one of those prophets, giving them the vision of what he's going to do, okay? And then telling them to go and prophesy, go say this to them and tell them this is what is getting ready to happen. That's what the vision is. It's a prophecy and then it comes to pass. It's either verbal, God will say it verbally to an individual prophet, or he may give them a picture of something that's getting ready to come to pass. But either way, it's a prophecy because it is a is a vision from God, from heaven, showing us something of the future. And so with the mirror uh, revelation, he often would send the prophet to, again, either the house of Israel or the house of Judah and explain to the prophet what he was going to do to them in reference to the rebellion that they were doing, whatever that may have consisted of. At times it was worshiping of other gods. At times it was... All of it we know that is it is rebellion, okay? But what type of rebellion? It could have been worshiping another god, going into defilement. He said at one point in time they were uh, having fornication relationships with each other's wives. I mean, there was different types of rebellion that they often uh, display. And so, therefore, that's when he would, God would send one of the prophets to their presence in the mix of them to either display their behavior or show them something that resembled their behavior and then what he was going to do to them in reference to their behavior. So in this one, this revelation coming from Jeremiah chapter 24, he's going to show Jeremiah uh, an example of what how he saw the children of Israel. Okay, so he begins with, uh, the Lord showed me and behold, two baskets of figs. They were set before the temple of the Lord. Now, he showed him this, he says, after Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon, and he had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jeho Jehoiakim. And at that time, he was the king of Judah, Jehoiakim was. He was the king of Judah, and the, and the princes of Judah also were carried away with the carpenters and the smiths from Jerusalem, and they had brought them to Babylon. Okay, so they were all being sent over and brought to Babylon. All those people that he just spoke of, okay? Before he showed him the baskets, the two baskets of figs. Now going into verse two, he said, one basket have very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. The other basket have very naughty figs, very bad figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. And the Lord said to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? And he said, I see figs, good figs, very good, and then evil, very evil. They cannot be eaten, for they are so evil. Okay, 
And then again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, thus says the Lord of God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. So he's saying, well, they get over into that land, the Babylon, where they're being carried to. He said, those figs, which he's referring to the children of Israel, the children of uh, tribe of Judah, whichever individuals in the mix of those tribes that have been good okay those figs that are good he's going to show them good he's going to acknowledge them with his covenant that he makes with us and he's going to uh show good kindness and love unto them he says for i will set my eyes upon them for good and i will bring them again to this land and i will build them and not pull them down and i will plant them and not pluck them up and i will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their whole heart. Okay, so that's what he said of the good figs. And again, see how he's using the comparison. Because again, we're looking at a mirror revelation. This is a mirror revelation. The mirror revelation consists of whenever God shows the prophet either a thing that is mirroring the behavior of the kingdom, of the, of the children of Israel, or he may have the prophet act out himself. He might have them do it because we looked at that also in uh, other chapters where he had Jeremiah do certain things, put the girdle on was one particular uh, video that we did in reference to what he had a prophet do that signified the behavior of the children of Israel and then his relationship to them. But nevertheless, it's in reference to comparisons. Okay, just like Jesus Christ did parables in the New Testament, which are comparisons. God uses these type of things, symbolizations to symbol, to bring to fruition the message, the revelation, whatever it may be. He wants to reveal to his kingdom in the earth. Okay, so going on after we talked about the good figs and he, how good he's going to be to the good figs among those two baskets that now the other basket, he goes on to say, and as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus says the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt. Okay? To be a reproach, to be a proverb, a taunt, a curse, and all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land and that I gave unto them and to their fathers. So basically he's saying to those bad, those other basket of fig, fig trees, uh, figs, are evil figs, referring to the house of Israel, and all that he's going to deliver them into, the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, okay? Not for good, but for their hurt. Now, when we take a look in the New Testament at the kingdoms of the earth, we can see if we go over to Matthew chapter four, that the kingdoms of the world belong to Satan. OK, chapter four in the book of Matthew. So what God is saying here to Jeremiah is he's going to deliver them over. He's going to give them over to, to Satan, the devil. Matthew chapter four. And we could begin with. Uh. It begins at the beginning of chapter 4 where Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and tempted of the devil. He had fasted 40 days and then uh, the devil came to him and began to say things to him uh, in reference to his uh, who he was and trying to make him deny who he was and uh, not consider who he was and who he, how he had been created by God. So uh, then it goes on to say here, verse 7, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil took him up into a exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Okay, so that's the verse we want to pay close attention for this revelation. And the fact that the devil was able to take Jesus to, okay, and show him all the kingdoms of the world because he created those kingdoms. OK, and uh, that's who God is saying he's going to give those evil figs 
two that are in the house of Israel in that chapter we just read in the book of Jeremiah. Okay, so then another uh, scripture we want to go over and look at is the kingdoms. That's in 1 John chapter 2. Further in the New Testament, the book of uh, the three books written by John, who was one of God's favorite disciples, Peter, James, and John. So they have books here. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, where he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh. So these are the kingdoms that he's getting ready to release them into. The, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And all those are not of the Father, but they're of the world. Okay? So that tells us the kingdoms that he's saying that he's going to deliver them over into. And then uh, 2 Timothy is going to be another reading we're going to take a look at. As we are taking a look at another mirror revelation example, because that's what this is, an example of uh, seeing how God uses the prophetic ministry to, uh, to display his heart, either through by message, revelation, uh, however, whatever he may send or use the prophetic ministry for. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Is our next reading, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and then uh, verse 19. Uh, starting with verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal, that the Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. So if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel to honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. And then he tells us to flee fornication, flee youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace with them that are called of the Lord out of the pure heart, okay, that are called of the Lord out of a pure heart. And the verses that we want to pay close attention to is the fact that he said in the verse 20, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and earth. So some to honor and some to dishonor. And because they had uh, in that particular chapter that we read about Jeremiah, looking at the figs, the bad figs, they had become a vessels, vessels of dishonor, okay? So therefore, they were not meat for the master's use. They had definitely not fleed the different things that he said to flee in this chapter. But then this is the New Testament also, okay? So they don't have Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. We have Jesus Christ, thank God. We have him in the New Testament for our sins, but nevertheless, God tells us also, just like he told the woman at the well, you know, go and sin no more. Now, if we should have trouble sinning, of course, we are to talk that over with God, with whatever uh, particular iniquity or transgression we're struggling with. Talk it over to the Lord, make it plain to him. Don't just not acknowledge it and go forward and continue to do it and do it and do it. Because, you know, once you've been called into the kingdom, that's opening up the door for a relationship with God. For us to talk to him and commune with him, uh, you know, and he calls us his friend. So, therefore, that door is open to commune with him in reference to whatever an individual may be struggling with. And in due time, he will deliver you. But I truly believe that he doesn't want us to not acknowledge those things that we're struggling with because we're in a relationship with him and he's the one that can deliver us from them. Okay, and if you've uh, been walking with Christ for a long time, you know some things that he's delivered you from, and you know some things that you may be still struggling with that you still need deliverance from, okay? So, and if he wants you to be delivered from them, he will deliver you from them because he is the deliverer. We are not the deliverer. He can do the delivering, and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for that. All right, so that is going to conclude the seven, part seven revelation to the mirror example 
where we are taking a look at the prophetic ministry and how God uses the prophet, which would be anyone in the kingdom today, because everyone that comes into the kingdom is a prophet, evangelist, teacher, pastor, and apostle. Okay, in the Old Testament, there were certain individuals that were prophets that walked in the prophetic ministry. And Moses and Aaron were the leaders, and then there were kings, and then there were uh, certain priests. But they were all not considered to hold those positions as we do today. Thanks be to glory of Christ Jesus and salvation. Okay. Or have access to it. But we have access to all the gifts. We have access to the Holy Spirit. And that's where all the gifts are within the Holy Spirit. All right. So uh, God bless you. God be with you. And I will see you on our next revelation Bible study or message for on the Feed My Sheep Foundation. Bible study video channel as we continue to go forward.